Hi, this is Scott. Welcome to the Tall Woodworker. In this video, I'm going to build a baseball themed display case. Stick around, I'll show you how I do it. So a friend of my sister contacted me about making a display case for her son uh, themed off of a home plate from baseball. Um, so she sent me over a couple pictures and I thought, yeah, I can make something like that. So that's what we're going to make in this video today. So I did a quick little sketch of it and the idea is you can put uh, some game balls and I'm also going to make an area where you can put like uh, tournament rings and things like that on here. So that's going to be the idea behind this build. It should be fairly simple. We're just going to use a single one by four piece of pine as well as a quarter inch sheet of plywood, just a simple two foot by two foot square. I do want to point out before I get started that this is not my design idea. I am basing my design off of pictures that were sent to me. So just like I said, wanted to get that out there before I get started. So with all that said, let's get building. I begin by cutting all the pieces to size on my crosscut sled. This project is made of a pine 1x4 and if memory serves me well, it was all out of a single 8 foot board. This project consists of three 90 degree angles and two 135 degree angles. You want to make sure that you cut the boards exactly in half for these angles in order for it to fit properly. Here I've set the bevel to 45 degrees and I'm cutting the proper boards with that angle for the 90 degree miter. Next, I set the bevel to 67.5 degrees. And now I can cut the angles on the remaining pieces that will create the 135 degree angle. After laying out the parts quickly to make sure that everything lines up, I go ahead and put everything together and then mark each of the corners so I know what edge glues to what. Since this is an indoor project, I'm using Tight Bond 2 for faster drying time. And the spring clamps you see help me get the 90 degree hold that I need. I can then fire a few brad nails to reinforce the joints. I repeat this for all the 90 degree angles. Then I need to figure out how to glue up everything together because those 135 degree angles, yeah, they don't make a spring clamp for that. I end up using a band clamp, the same type that I use to glue boxes together. I use the 90 degree supports on each of the 90 degree corners and then as I tighten it up, it pulls all the angles together properly, including those 135 degree angles. This worked like a champ. While the glue dries, I start marking out the center lines of the shelves. The two for the balls need to be divided in half, but for the ring shelf, I set the line closer to the front. Then I use a pair of dividers to mark the center points for the holes I will drill in the next step. I make sure to leave enough of a gap in between each one. 
And for the rings, I actually use my own ring as a measure. Over at the drill press, I use a Forstner bit to make the holes. The smaller holes will get filled with dowels to hold the rings, and then the larger ones will remain empty and simply cradle the baseballs. And now, an exercise in futility. My first thought was to cut all the dowel pieces with the crosscut sled on the table saw. This was not a good idea. It kept tearing out the dowels, and in a couple instances, it shot the piece out, luckily away from me. Moral of the story, don't make really small cuts on a crosscut sled without a swing stop. Instead, I end up using a handsaw with a 90 degree guide to get all these pieces cut. This was far safer than the table saw, and actually did not take that much time at all. Now I sand all the parts as it will be almost impossible once it's fully assembled. I'm not going to show all the literal hours of footage I have, so you're just going to have to trust me that this was all done in the background. Let's go and move on to the good stuff. I laid the frame on a sheet of quarter inch plywood, then traced it out to give me an idea of where to cut. Then I grabbed my jigsaw and literally cut it off camera. <sighs> Sorry everyone for the bad camera placement. Time for more sand- wait! No! No more of this! Let's glue in the dowels instead. A little dab of glue in each hole, then I put each dowel in place. I use a weight on top of one of the other shelves to help hold it down to dry. Now it's time to attach the back to the frame. I apply some glue all the way around and spread it. Then, after putting the back onto the frame, I secure it down with some more brad nails. I then take a few passes with a flush trim bit in my trim router to get it all flushed up. If I were to do this all over again, I probably would have waited before installing the lower shelf, as it ended up getting in the way when it came to staining. But I didn't think of it at the time, so here I am gluing and nailing in the lower ball shelf. I send some brad nails in through the back side as well for reinforcement, then flip it over and use a hand plane to flush up the edge of the shelf. Then time for more sand. Damn it, Scott, now look what you did. You are focusing so much on the sanding and missed all the staining the inside. No more sanding footage. Anyway, I mocked up some spacers, then installed the upper ball shelf with glue and brads. Then I could fit the middle ring shelf in as well.
I went around and filled up all the brad holes with some wood putty. Then more, haha, I learned this time, no sanding. Let's get this thing stained up properly. The color I'm using is Kona from Verathane. I really like how this darkens the wood into this really deep dark brown. It looks really well on pine, and it also looks good on other woods as well. The stain is also real simple to apply. It only takes a couple of coats and drying time is really quick. Pretty much right after I'm done finishing the stain, it's ready to wipe off on the first areas. On the back side, I decided to experiment a bit and apply a laser engraved wood sticker with my logo on it to the back. Then I stain up the entire back. I really do like how my logo popped once the stain was applied and wiped away. Let's get this clear coated. And that's where I almost knocked off one of my shop lights. Stop trying to be so showy, Scott. This is my first time using one of these pop-up spray booths, and I'm really glad I got it. I apply a few coats of spray-on polyurethane, and then the project is done. And so here is the final display. So got three shelves on here on the inside. Uh, these two hole, have the holes in them for uh, the baseballs. You can get eight of them on those two shelves and then 11 rings on the middle shelf. You could potentially also uh, use the top for some sort of plaque storage or frames or something else like that. So uh, that's the final construction. I haven't given this to the client just yet. Uh, and Hopefully I'll get some pictures that I would have actually shown before this. So if you saw pictures of it with some baseballs and stuff in here, then I got those pictures. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to comment and tell me what you like about this and maybe what you would do differently about this. And uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, hope you like this. And until next time, thanks for coming to my shop.